Hi everybody and welcome to the third and last tutorial for Phrase TMS. Today you are going to learn how to run a pseudo translation and how you can export the target files. So let's get started. All right, so in this tutorial we're going to work with the same project that we worked in the previous tutorials where we prepared the JSON file and the TXT file. What we are going to do, again, is to run a pseudo translation. And in case you are not familiar with the concept of pseudo translation, you will know what it's doing in a few minutes. So let's just select both jobs. Okay, with this checkbox, we can select both jobs. And here for pre-translate, we can specify pseudo translate where empty. What the pseudo translation is going to do is that it's going to change or modify the character that we have in the string for translation with the dollar symbol or if you want to use any other characters you could use the transliterate function and just do for example the a with the a cute the b with the beta in order for you to change this character with this one the b with the beta etc okay i find it actually more useful and more helpful to just replace any character any letter really because it's not going to replace the period, the exclamation marks, the numbers. So it's going to replace letters with the dollar symbol. And you will see this later on why it's so useful. Here we have some options. Now we have the option to mix with source text and I'm going to disable it because for example, if we have uh, a string which says hello, what this is going to do is that it's going to use the H then the dollar symbol, then the E, then the dollar symbol, then the L, the dollar symbol again. And I just want dollar symbols to be used. So I disable this option. You can also add to target segment start and to target segment end some things. For example, we could even add uh, an underscore at the beginning or at the end of each segment or translation unit. All right. We're not going to do this again. We're simply going to replace the original text with the dollar symbols. The transliterate is what we, what I showed you before. You can just use a comma separated list when you are mapping the source with the target, which means they find this letter and replace it with this other letter. The segment key hash length. This is just some numeric values that are prepended, you know, to the string. And we're not going to do this. In fact, I have never uh, used this option and I have never seen a project where the pseudo translation is done this way. All right. So just dollar symbols or something with a dictionary, which is changing some letters into some other letters specific to that language. And finally, this is some important sometimes. It's just the target segment length. If we say 100%, this means that we're going to have the same number of dollar symbols as we have in the in the source so for example if hello has five uh, letters we're going to change this hello into five dollar symbols if the original string has i don't know 100 characters 100 letters then the target or the pseudo translation is going to have the same length you could use just for example 130 Imagine that you would like to see how the German translation, which is usually longer, occupies the space in your file or in your DTP file or whatever. Uh, in that case, then it might be useful because you are adding a 30% more of characters than what you have in the source. Okay, but for this case, let's just use 100%, which is the same length. You can use pseudo translate. So let's run a pseudo translation. And since we have selected both jobs it's going to run a set of translation on both now we would like to open both files to see how it looks like in the editor so again instead of just open each file one by one we can enable this option and select both jobs and click on any of them you will see that here we have a joint file it's a, like a virtual file and we're going to have first the json file as you can see here messages.json in job number one and as you can see, all of the text has been changed into a dollar symbol. And this is pretty useful because when you export the file later on, you're going to see what has been included for translation. All right. So for example, here you will see that the notifications enrollment title, this has been kept as per the source. The student 
in here this is a placeholder and it, it has been kept as per the source 2 because it's a placeholder which is here number one and the tag number one is kept in the in the translation however everything that you can see with dollar symbol that means it has been included for translation anything that you can't see with dollar symbols for example the context this means that it has been excluded from translation which is good because it's the context in this case and here for the enrollment code and the enrollment notification which is the type it has also been excluded so that's pretty good and then if you scroll down you're going to see the strings.txt if you click in here you're going to change the preview for from the json file into the txt this is job number two you will see what has been included for translation so anything that is found in dollar symbols it means that that's the text that is pseudo translated all right any other text for example the the keys here or the identifiers or the developer comments six five etc that has been excluded from translation which is okay and the same happens for the html tags and the other patterns like the student level okay which is good again however sometimes you are not going to see this in the editor if you're working with many files so let's just close this tab and let's see how we can export the files this is completely valid when you try to export the set of translated files or when you try to export the final files in the corresponding language all right so you can select both of them click on download and then completed file final file is grayed out because we haven't yet approved all of the translations etc so with completed file it will export the latest version of these files so we select complete completed file now it has been exported and we can go to the downloads and let's just copy this here all right so we have the source files messages.json and strings.txt and this is what i meant in the first tutorial if you didn't miss it so when we create the project we can specify what's the file name for the target files so we keep the same name messages underscore and then just the language code for the target language that we are using which is ES ES now let's just open all of the files with Nota++ here we have the source file here we have the corresponding pseudo translation as you can see only the text that is supposed to be translated like this or like this it has been pseudo translated and this is a good way for you to check that the filter that you have used is correct it's doing a good job you can scroll down and see everything in here and the same for the strings.txt as you can see this is just the same way of visualizing the files as we did before with the preview but here you will be able to see all of the files or for example if you have I don't know 50 files in your project you're not going to go one by one you will basically use a tool like beyond compare in order to compare all of the files in fo different folders or whatever all right so this is pretty useful and the pseudo translation again shows what has been included for translation which is okay and the, the comments have been excluded and the same for the identifiers so that's all for this video and I hope you have enjoyed the set of tutorials for Phrase TMS. If you like the content, you can subscribe to the Localization Academy channel so you don't miss any future videos. Again, thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you soon. Bye!